Hello adventurers, my name is Dan from Dungeons by Dan, and today I'm going to be doing an adventure walkthrough for my Not in a Line side quest. This adventure should last about two sessions. It's for five players of six level. Uh, it has a homebrew race in it, which is similar to like a merfolk type race. And it has three maps, although you'll be spending most of the time on one map. It's a, a seafaring adventure, so this is a great uh, adventure hook for any uh, any town that has a shipyard or maybe your uh, players are already on a boat, so this would be a good side quest for that as well. So without further ado, spoiler alert, and let's dive into the adventure and check it out. So here we are on the splash page of the Not in a Line adventure. The first portion of the adventure is mostly a role-playing uh, scenario where you meet Captain Ludwig and he's looking for sailors to assist him in hunting some whales. Uh, there could be many other adventure hooks, but this is a, a good one that uh, I chose to use for the adventure where players are excited about maybe getting lots of gold for helping him uh, go get these narwhal whales and their horns would, uh, well, they're actually teeth, right? Uh, but they would uh, fetch a fair price in the in market and so adventurers would be interested in gaining gold for that. That being said, Captain Ludwig will get uh, the adventurers to help him out. He'll bargain with price and all that, although it won't much matter because, spoiler alert, the boat sinks. Dun dun dun. So the first part of the adventure is really a role-playing scenario. Players are able to explore the boat and talk with other NPCs that are on the boat. And so they get to know the characters pretty well. And this is important because when things go down uh, in a few minutes here, these are the types of characters that they're going to be stuck stuck with. It's going to be sort of like a uh, Gilligan's Island thing. Some characters are great and other characters are uh, less than favorable for the PCs. So that being said, that's a big portion of this first part of the adventure and they get to exercise their role-playing skills. The first map that you're going to be on is where you're going to do the role-playing with the various NPCs and get to know them. As that starts to dwindle down, the captain will shout out that he sees the narwhal and he starts setting a course for them. They charge through the, the waves and finally they get to a, a, an area sort of inland where a siren song, like a Greek siren song, can be heard and the sailors fall under the spell. What happens is the uh, Captain Ludwig starts to sail towards some rocks which start appearing just barely under the water and hits them one by one. On the map here you can see that I've aligned the center mast with the markers. So it's got, sort of easiest to do this round by round and you can see in the wings here we got several hidden creatures uh, for every round. And so on round two, there's going to be more creatures on round three, and then four, five, and uh, you shouldn't need a sixth round. So that being said, as you are going through these different rounds and Captain Ludwig is pulling the boat further and further towards these rocks, you can see that they get closer and closer. The whole scenario is supposed to either... Uh, capture the or charm the various NPCs and then capture them. So this can be a little bit of a tricky scenario because some players aren't going to like to be captured but I would recommend uh, give them a little bit of action and then allow them some freedom of choice but once they get charmed and once the boat starts to sink especially if they're in heavy armor things go rapidly downhill and I would sort of say uh, fade to black, sort of fade to the narration and uh, take away uh, any actions at some point uh, once they've utilized some of their actions. A couple reasons for this. One, the adventure has been designed for the cave scenario. Uh, getting hurt in this scenario is fine, uh, but you certainly don't want to beat the crap out of the players before they really start the campaign. Uh, if for some reason you do get to that point where you're fighting the characters, again, I don't recommend that at this point, just fade to black and capture them, uh, you should give them basically some sort of a long rest once they get to the next part. So the next part of the adventure 
is in the caves. Now, up to the right here, we have some pre-staged NPCs that survived. In this cave is a character named Valana the Mage. She's from town, she's been captured, and she's been here for quite some time. She's basically got five levels of exhaustion, so she's looking to get out of here, but she can't help the, the players. That being said, because she's a wizard, she has a spell book and it has all the ingredients to do a teleportation circle. This is the ticket out of the cave. Otherwise, the players will be far under the cave and they can get out of the cave if they want, but there are conveniently placed uh, giant sharks, uh, all sorts of different sharks, if they get out of the cave. So players should recognize if they do get out of uh, the cave uh, into the open ocean, they're in a worse position and that this is the best position they're in to use this mage's skills. So Valana will send them out. The first portion of the quest is to escape the, the cave scenario. The problem is they'll have been, uh, as they're taken captured, they'll have taken their weapons as well. So there's a relatively easy encounter here where the players will have to uh, somehow trick and get out of the cave and then start swimming around. They'll swim around and eventually find uh, the first area here where they can go in and get to a, another easy encounter where they'll see their weapons, which are very easy to access. If they charge out of the water, they can scoop up their weapons and obviously the battle will have already begun, but it adds a sense of tension to getting their weapons. So that should be really fun. The, the cavern splits left and right from here. And if they go down this way, uh, again, it's another optional battle, but they'll see that th the creatures are eating uh, people. They, they, they sneak into the, the town at night or they get sailors and then they will eat them. They, they use their bodies to feed their, their little egglings here in the pools of water. Uh, so that, they'll find that out if they go down this route. They start to head over to the eastern route and they'll find that the, lion the lionfish will are very interested in above ground cultures. So they take a lot of their stuff and they try and set up their rooms in ways that they've seen other ship captains have. So they try and emulate this in a very uh, odd way because it's not natural to them, but they find that the artwork and the items and artifacts of above ground are very beautiful. So once they get here, they start entering the main par portion of the cave. There's a couple large guard fish here and they'll pop up and attack the players. Most of these encounters are very, very easy. They should be fairly easy uh, that way. Once they get through each of these minor encounters, the big encounter is at the end here. Now, over here you'll find the spell book from the wizard Valana, and she'll be able to cast her teleportation circle. The players don't actually even need to go to the very end of the cave to fight the, the queen lionfish, uh, but what happens is, once they get to this area, if they have skipped the queen's lair, as they start the teleportation circle, we'll start to ramp up the uh, excitement here by having the queen attack the players and having escape just in the nick of time. So there's a real sense of pressure that's happening this entire time as they don't know where they're going and they're running low on resources and then they're trying to escape and then they have to do this within a few short rounds and get to, into that teleportation circle and then they're being attacked. So that's the gist of the adventure. There are a few more specifics and details of each room, but the general overview is to get to the teleportation circle and save Valana and she will escape using the teleportation circle with the players. That being said, as there is no treasure from Captain Ludwig, Vilana will reward the players with a substantial amount of gold, and then the players can go on their merry way for their next campaign. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this adventure walkthrough. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll let you know when there's new content available. Until the next time, keep rolling.